Welcome to the Beyond Report on this January 28th, 2020. It's your friendly neighborhood PhD, Dr. Judd Burton, and this is the Troll Hunter edition. I'll explain a little bit more about that. Uh, again, thanks for all your support. Uh, click a like, subscribe, and share if you like the content. Um, start off with a few announcements. Uh, if you're in Lubbock, Texas, on uh, February the 7th through the 9th, you'll want to catch Dr. Greg Reed. He'll be giving a, a seminar at Fellowship Church, and uh, this will will deal with spiritual warfare, uh, deliverance, and biblical demonology, and you'll be hard-pressed to find anybody else to give you uh, better information on all of those topics than Dr. Greg Reed, so you'll want to catch that if you're in the area. Uh, last week, I uh, debuted a new series called Antiquity X, which will deal with uh, questions about the ancient past and the supernatural. And the question uh, that I dealt with last week had to do with the conflation of Nimrod and Santa Claus. We'll follow up that with uh, uh, an episode on uh, Nimrod himself very soon. Uh, the Quick Classic series that's up and coming uh, will deal with the Aegean civilization, the Minoans and the Mycenaeans. And uh, I prefaced that with an episode on Frank Calvert last week, who is the, the real archaeological hero in the discovery of the ancient city of Troy. So tune in for uh, those. Those should be up later this week. Uh, my colleague and friend, Dr. Aaron Judkins, and I continue to work on a, a book on Gobekli Tepe, uh, as viewed through the lens of the Bible. Um, we're looking probably for a, a second quarter uh, release on that. Uh, we'll keep you updated uh, on the book itself. In other news, there are some interesting uh, archaeological and anthropological things going on. Uh, one story that I, I saw this week has to do with uh, scientists who have reproduced the vocal tract of an ancient Egyptian citizen uh, who was a scribe at the Temple of Karnak under Ramesses XI. Uh, this would make this guy about 3,000 years old. And scientists have been doing this sort of thing with, with dinosaurs and megafauna to an extent, but I don't know that it's ever been done uh, on, on somebody in the antique world. Uh, so they were actually able to reproduce um, from the positioning of his vocal tract and the, the actual recreation of, of this this vocal tract model on a 3D printer, they're able to reproduce the sound. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description so that you can go and actually see that for yourself. Uh, in other news, um, scientists at uh, the um, at LSU, actually, archaeologists and scientists at LSU, are reassessing some Indian mounds that have been on the campus uh, or once they were thought to only be a couple thousand years old um, if that uh, they're finding artifacts now that lead them to believe that it's more like 11,300 years old which would put it at the end of the Pleistocene epoch and there are even some researchers who are touting it as the uh, American Gobekli Tepe it certainly would be the same time frame as Gobekli Tepe and some of the Natufian sites uh, in the ancient Near East uh, as to whether there would be any connection. Again, those connections will have to be vetted out in, in future research. Uh, but it is an interesting find because it puts it in the running uh, to be the oldest man-made structure or set of structures in North America. They're earthworks, uh, but they're still man-made. Um, so I'll put a link in the description. You can check that out um, on your own. Uh, I'd also like to draw attention to um, the apprenticeship in biblical anthropology that the Institute of Biblical Anthropology offers. Uh, it's a 12-course module um, for a limited time. I think I'm going to run it through mid-February now. Uh, you can get a hold of it for $200, but I, I can't keep offering it um, at that low of a price for so long because... Uh, it's just changing into something bigger and better and um, you can avail yourself of that by going to the uh, uh, the Institute of Biblical Anthropology website and also I wanted to do a brief review on um, 
the uh, program Nightfall that the History Channel produced. Now, I, I guess I'm a little behind the curve on the show itself, uh, but I finally did watch it, and it's really interesting um, insofar as that it's not so heavily saturated with a Da Vinci Code sort of thing. I mean, there is a sort of mystical air, air to it, but uh, it doesn't dominate the, the narrative of the story. Uh, and in fact, the, the events associated with the Templars and their history are, are adhered to fairly closely. Um, the series starts with the, uh, the, the Templars and the Crusaders at the, uh, the Battle of uh, Acre, which was the last Crusader stronghold in the Holy Land before they were expelled in 1291. And uh, the the Grail, the Holy Grail is, is uh, at the center of the story. They they oh, well, I, I won't let too much uh, too too many cats out of the bag because you need to watch it for yourself because it is a fairly good uh, program. Um, what I thought was interesting about it is not only the central character Landry, who is one of the the temple masters. Um, I also thought that it, it, it it's interesting because it weaves elements of Arthurian romance into the story. So again, you have you have the Grail. Uh, you even have some of the characters who are, are named after um, personages in the Arthurian romances, like Percival, uh, Gawain, and uh, Tancred was a, a, another one. And uh, I think the guy that really steals the show in all this. Uh, is Mark Hamill. Uh, he's cast as Brother Talus, uh, the, the elder uh, Templar who trained some of the initiates. And if you've seen it, call me crazy, I think he was more Luke Skywalker in Nightfall than he actually was in The Last Jedi. Uh, he's gruff and hard on the initiates, but uh, he's also got a heart for them. Uh, so he, he plays a really interesting character. And uh, again, a lot of the narrative holds true to what we know what we know about the history of the Templars their uh, you know their expulsion from the Holy Land um, the uh, their falling out with the the court of France um, and their ultimate demise um, and uh, the charges of heresy that were leveled leveled against them so I give it three and a half grails out of five I liked it but I wasn't completely in love with it. But I would recommend recommend it if you're interested in Templar history. Okay, now finally for what you've all been waiting for. What is this troll hunter mess about? Well, the internet vernacular, as we all know, for people who hound you in the comment sections of, of social media, uh, it, has come to light on trolls. We call these people trolls. And so I thought it would be fun to come up with a, a top 10 list uh, of interesting troll ideas and comments that I've seen over the last couple of years. And so in my hand, I have the top 10 fringe troll reasons that you might be with the New World Order. Number 10. You do not subscribe to Flat Earth Theory. Number nine, you don't believe in a Hebrew New Testament. Number eight, you celebrate Christmas. Number seven, you're an academic. Number six, you're an academic who was trained at a Jesuit university. Number five, you believe we have in fact gone to space. Number four, you think there are better translations than the King James Version of the Bible. Number three, you resettle your eyeglasses with secret Masonic gestures. Number two, you go to church on Sunday instead of Saturday. And the number one reason fringe trolls think that you might be with the New World Order 
you have not watched the proper YouTube videos. And that is this week's Troll Hunter Top 10 list. Hey, if you can't laugh about some of this stuff, you're probably think taking something a little too seriously, right? Okay. All in good fun. Again, thanks for your support. Click a like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you soon. Godspeed.